I want to sort of go back um, to the basics. Um, what holds, to me, what holds discipleship together? And it's going to flow into, we're going to talk about the church this afternoon. What holds the church together? And um, I've been amazed already as we went up and got to visit a team in Dallas, a team in Austin, a team in Florida, and some of the other teams. And man, the love among the brothers and sisters in Christ is amazing. And, and it's just, I think it's core of who we are and what we do is love. And, um, and so I, I just sort of want to hit this piece as far as biblically looking up. I mean, I, I just think if there was one place to err is on the side of love. And I think it, if with discipleship, it ought to be on the side of love. Yes. I think when it comes to the church, it ought to be on the side of love. Yes. And when we get into leadership, it ought to be on the side of love. So we're, we're, we're really just going to look at some real basic things, but I'm going to let you do a discovery style. And then, then we're going to go a little more into some nuts and bolts types things. But I, I just want you around your table. And I, and I know it's, it's not a whole lot of scriptures, but it is a lot of scriptures. But um, <laughs> what, and, and y'all know the gist of 1 Corinthians 13. But um, so what is love? And I want you to just look at these. Why do we love? Who do we love? How do we love? And then um, probably one of, man, probably a couple of my favorites are, are right in. So I want to go 1 John uh, 4, 7 through the end of the book, but um, 1 Peter 4, 8 is one of my favorite um, passages to use amongst missionaries. So it's going to sort of culminate things and amongst type, type you folks like y'all. So... I just want you to take um, some time, uh, probably give you about 12 to 15 minutes to just discover this um, in the Word. Again, I'm just taking you back to the basics, more reps on the basics, but I don't think we can fail um, ever spending too much time right here. So I, I want you just to drill in um, around your table on this particular command of loving God, loving your neighbor, all right? Um, just a couple folks. What what is love according to these passages? God is love. Sacrificial love. Love is focused on others. Love ties everything together. It's the glue. Good. Anything else y'all want to add to this? We're, we're going to dig in later into Corinthians this afternoon. And it's going to, I think it's going to be really interesting for you when you see that actually the whole core of the correction of the church in Corinthians was the command love. It, it's going to, it's, it's baffling when you look at it. It's really cool. So we're, we're going to keep going with that this afternoon. Now why should we love? Because he loved us. Because he loved us. What else? Anything else? He commanded. He commanded it. Yeah. It's just a command to love one another. So all we know we do. Yeah. And that, that's that's the bone. You know, because how we treat one another, how we love one another. I mean, can you fathom this? This either proves or disproves the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, is it, now we know the gospel's true. We know it's a fact. But in the community, according to Scripture, our love for one another is a proof that the gospel is true. But therefore, if we're not, it, it discredits the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which that's, uh, we need to take that real seriously. I mean, that that is... Um, that is not the reputation we want. Um, so who? Who do you love? Well, that's the last thing. We must be too old. <laughs> Everybody else is going, what? what? Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking some more of it, so I can do <laughs> You know it, Thor. We're trying to hide. You love me, my pet Thor, my So who do you love? <laughs> love God and love your neighbors. Love God and love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Everybody. 
on the airplane, going to New York City, Boston, Europe. It's my neighbor, is the reality. It's my people. All right. How do we love? And we'll just go these two right here. So how do we love? Keeping his commandments. Keeping his commandments. Tending and feeding his sheep. Tending and feeding his sheep. Laying down our lives for one another is a demonstration of the love of Christ. Receiving it ourselves. Yeah, receiving love. Love deeply. Yeah, love deeply. By the power of the Spirit. By the power, yeah, that's, that's, that's got, especially, you know, you're trying to love me, you better have the power of the Spirit. You know, you want to, yeah, he's pretty messy. Yeah. You better have some power in the Spirit. Yeah, so we need to walk in the Spirit, walk in love in the Spirit with one another. That's how we love one another. That's how we can look over a lot of the mess that each one of us has is, is through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God. Um, what else? The letter remaining passages. According to his example. Yeah, he, he was the first example of love. Demonstrated it by coming um, the incarnate God, living, walking among us, experienced everything we experienced. And, and you just go through his whole life of Christ, and you know, it's really interesting. One of the ones that always amazed me, I think about the Samaritan woman. You know, and when he, he literally, with a Samaritan woman, should have been taking steps back, but instead he's engaging her in this conversation. And he broke all the rabbinic tra traditions, but he loved God, loved his neighbor, and didn't do it in sin. And then you got the other example where Jesus is there, and the woman's at his feet with tears crying over his feet. Now, I don't know, you know, I'm th sitting there thinking, I was, I was sharing with these guys. I, one day we, we got church disciplined um, in, a, in a church in Nepal because my wife taught um, the story of um, Adam and Eve. And she taught in Adam and Eve that Adam was present with Eve when the sin took place. And because of that, we got thrown out of the church because the men had taught that the women were only present during the sin. <laughs> and uh, they didn't have an Old Testament either. So we got, we got excommunicated from the church and we had to get some help to show them that, hey, it actually is in the Bible that Adam and Eve were both there. And so we're sitting in the uh, meeting where we're getting unexcommunicated from the church. And my buddy Kuchong was climbing Mount Everest numerous times. He comes up behind me and I'm sitting there and, you know, he's like six foot tall. He's a really sweet, goofy guy. I mean, I, I love him. He's just, but he comes up, wraps his legs around me from behind. And then he does the old interlocking fingers. So he comes around here, interlocking fingers. And he takes this arm and swoops it over my shoulder and starts picking at my hairs. You know, and I'm feeling violated. I, I feel like I'm in sin. I mean, I'm just sitting there going, how in the world? Okay, I love you, Pachon, but I'm not feeling the love. I'm just feeling, you know. Just, so I'm trying to bear it. I've walked miles holding hands of Nepali men. And just all I can do is look at my hand and go on. I can't think about anything else. I just, just don't feel right. But here's Jesus. And this woman comes up to his feet. And she's crying and weeping and tears. And he literally should have took ten steps backwards. But there he loves her. He loves God. Loves his neighbor. Her and the neighbors in the room. Without sinning. And you just look at every example he has. And it's amazing. He fulfilled the commands of God by doing it without sin. Where I'm sitting there going, but John, get off of me. I got like, can you shake them things? Cooties, man. It's just cooties. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what cooties are. But I mean, it's just like, anyhow, this is like, um, the, the last thing I, I just sort of wanted to think about is 1 Peter 4, 8. Um, being a missionary, living overseas, um, you, you live in cultural stress. We lived in a civil war. Um, we had bombs going off and riots and all kind of crazy stuff. And most of the time, no electricity, no water. You get stressed a little bit. And, and sometimes you do things you regret. You know, cars hitting you, hitting your kids. And you can get mad. And you can get angry. And there can be a day you see a missionary do something and you go, whoo, boy, that was, 
that was sin. That was bad, you know, you, and you see it. And there's, there's a day somebody can see me too, though, and they go, wow, we need to take Jeff to member care. I mean, he's, he's off the rocker. He's off the reservation. We need, we need to work on it. But, but I do think there's a time where we, we have to look upon one another and, and there's some things where it can be misunderstood. And I do, you know, hey, if there's blatant sin, we need to deal with it and address it. But there's other times where love covers a multitude of sins. And, and if there's a love for one another, there's, there's a lot of stuff we can work through. And you know how it is when you're doing messy discipleship. You know, you got folks living together and we remember we've got a four-year-old one call one, one day going, one, that effing Jesus, he's great, you know, and you're going, okay. <laughs> yeah, I love the sword method, you know, you know, with the uh, bomb explicatives, you know, you're just like, four years old, wow. <laughs> and mom and dad are okay with it, you know, so, yeah, he is. Um, so, you know, it's messy. And, and there's a side where you're, you're forbearing in love. Just trying to help drive them to Christ and drive them to that love of Christ. And we choose those the right battles to fight. But we want to get them to the love of Christ. And, and it's got to be demonstrated by what we do. Okay? Um, here, here's what I want you to do just, just for a minute around your tables. Just go on. Where, where do you need personally to work on your love? Where, where is there some areas when you're discipling, maybe you're struggling, you're lacking some love? Or, or, so look one on the, the side where maybe you're struggling. Or maybe it's with the team. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's love towards the bride of Christ. I mean, sometimes, you know, most of my, I, I got powder burns on my flak jacket from friendly fire, you know. And so it's just like, oh, where, where did that come from? And my brothers, you know, put the friendly fire on me of things they want to zing me with. And, um, you know, and you get weary. But so where, where do you need to be more forbearing in your love, in your discipleship? But also, what are some ways you need, you say, wow, man, it's got, God's got His finger on this area of my life, and I need to demonstrate more love in p this particular way. Um, so what's an area you need to work on, and where could you demonstrate more love? So I just want you to discuss that just for a couple minutes around the table of what is that area personally? And then we're going to talk more about the church this afternoon, okay? So I'm just going to give you a few minutes there.